know, cowboys, they love to eat what me and Shan cook, but I've heard them talk out there. Wonder what they're going to fix for dessert. Well, today, if we're going to fix something sweet, I'm going to bring something that I think is the sweetest thing in the world in here. And what we're going to make sugar. Dutch oven cobbler is probably one of the best things you could cook in a Dutch oven. I share with you a basic, what we call is a dump cobbler. Yep. And so what we do is we have a basic batter recipe. And then from there, you can really add your own fruit. Or combine fruit. Or combine fruit or throw whatever you want in it. We're doing cherry today. Ooh, I love cherry. This recipe is great for a deep 12-inch oven. The reason that we suggest a deep oven is because anything that's got a bunch of rise in it, like a cake or a cobbler, you want to give yourself that buffer at the top so you don't have so much heat on the top lid. And it's that coming up, coming up, and it's going to start to burn. You must, no, you must have taken Kent Rollins cooking school. I have, and I've watched all the Kent Rollins YouTube videos to find out. What you call cow juice. It ain't soy milk. It ain't none of that stuff. It is real juice. The can has got a hole in it. Somebody shot it. You see, guys, it's like a thick pancake batter consistency. Then I also add a teaspoon of vanilla. This recipe I'm switching a little bit. Um, oh, we also, if it's a peach or something like that, we'll throw in a little cinnamon. So you can make variations. For this cherry one, I'm going to do about a teaspoon of vanilla. Whoa, that my much. gosh. And I'm doing a teaspoon of almond extract. Almond extract is awesome with cherries, oh, right? It is. Using a cherry that is not a sweet cherry. It's like a tart cherry. Go ahead and boil it with a little sugar just to taste. And then after you boil that, sometimes I'll put a little almond extract with the cherries themselves to get a little... Yeah, when you're, when you're using almond extract, it's always best if you're boiling fruit, always put it in there after it boils, not before because you'll boil a lot of that flavor away. A lot of recipes say preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Make sure when you're baking, you do not preheat your Dutch oven. That is right. right? I'll probably lick this bowl while you finish making this out, okay? It is pretty good. This is sort of pretty, isn't it? It is pretty. Looks like a tie-dye t-shirt in there. Or it looks there. like somebody got shot in the Dutch <laughs> <laughs> What about some more of that juice? Are you going to let any of that get in there? Yeah, some of that juice. Ooh. All right. We used about a sack and a half of cherries and the juice from that sack. So let's okay. put it on the fire. I got it on a tall trivet and part of the reason is we're in pretty soft ground so it's sinking a little bit but I would normally recommend you can do like our tall trivet is about five and a half inches you could go mid-size on this as yep. well which is about a three inch so yep. trivet size isn't all that much important but I did a pretty uh, moderate amount of coals around the outside edge not directly underneath but kind of creeping under just a tad and then loaded up on top yep. right so we're just gonna watch it. We're gonna want to remember to rotate it every now and then. Rotated it a couple times, but I'm gonna check it out now. The wind has gotten up just a teeny bit, so I'm gonna see what it's doing. Ooh, so you can see how it's puffed up a lot here. The wind picked up, and so now you can see some of that browning. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick it a little bit to see how much moisture, that's a little trick. And you can see there's, there's still quite a bit of moisture left. So I'm just gonna rotate it again. And what I'm actually looking for is I want to see maybe a little bubble come up around the sides of that juice, a little bubble in here, but checking your heat. So I want that five second rule about six inches off and it's definitely, I can't hold it more than five seconds. My top heat is a little higher or hotter than my bottom heat. And one of the reasons is the ground was wet and uh, it's sucking up some of that moisture. So I'm actually, I think to speed this up a little bit, I'm gonna add just a touch more coals to the bottom and keep rotating. You'll see this big, huge chunk. If you ever get a huge chunk like that, just make sure to break it up just a tad because you don't want a super hot spot right there and you've got cooler spots. So just break it up and try to kind of spread it around a little evenly. Take a look at this again. Poofed up a lot too, but still got a little moisture. Now, this is what Kent hates, but this is what I do all the time. When I, whenever I'm cooking a cobbler, I'm gonna use a spoon and I'm gonna poke the cobbler. And you can see all that goo start coming up. 
for me, it's just an easier way to bring some of that other liquid up and incorporate it a little better and then it'll cook out faster. You can also kind of, when you poke down, you can kind of feel what that bottom crust is doing. I'm gonna take this off the heat, the bottom heat and I'm gonna keep cooking it from the top. The top still has quite a bit of heat, so I'm good. And what you have to remember, even though you took it off the bottom heat, this top is still circulating heat throughout the whole cast iron pot. So you're still cooking all the way through. While you weren't looking, I did my, my method with the spoon. You didn't kick it. I kicked it, and then I also poked let me look, it. So let me let's, look. let's have a look. <gasps> Come in close. Oh, see here, see where all we had all that liquid? It baked out. And so when we kick, go ahead and kick again. See when he kicks it, it's all solid. Cobbler is not like a cake. So you're kind of wanting to find that balance between that like liquid goo and that baked through cake. Now I like mine more. Here we life. go. Here we go. So I'm going to cook it a little longer so it bakes through. Can't you like yours? I like mine to have that little more liquid to it. So when you dip it in there, you can sort of see that stuff run out. So you'll cook it for And a then when it time. goes on that ice cream and it melts and you get that, what you call it? Look at that. That's... I was wanting to buy it. Well, I'm just looking through. Okay, here. Can you see? So we've got some of this goo here. That's what you like. The goo mixed with the cake like. I mean, that's what makes a cobbler, right? Oh. Is it hot? No. Mm -hmm. Is it hot? Mm-hmm. Oh think? my gosh, folks. Tell You've had like five spoonfuls. Is this not a good cobbler? It's pretty good. Uh, I want to thank you folks for stopping by the wagon today. We've had a lot of requests to do a cobbler video. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless you each and every one. And we hope you have a great day above the grass. Hang on. What are you doing? It's not whiskey. It's vanilla. Oh, I thought, on you. I thought it was whiskey.